ever bright. Where all who believe the Savior here forever shall stay. And having been saved by grace divine, I'm going that way. I'm going that way. I'm going that way. And Jesus the Savior. Peace. 
rhythm it's fresh and new each day and with love my heart is overflowing that is why i can say and i keep falling in love with you over and over over and over again i keep falling in love with you over and over thinking that one song's my testimony song and then I find another one that's my testimony song but I do love to tell the story I thought that was a great song and to tell it to those in the nursing home when we had the opportunity a little while ago to go and minister and music I went with Beverly to see Francis and we also saw my Aunt Linda there what, what a blessing it is just just to keep proclaiming the name of Jesus to keep singing his songs and and then that song is just perfect I do I keep falling in love with him every day he never fails us other people may fail you but Jesus he'll never fail us he'll go with us always praise the Lord
front pew for a little bit. I'm going to need your help. That first we're going to ask Jeff if he'll recognize the youngest and the oldest father. Mr. Oren, would you send him down here? George Hill. I'll start with the youngest father first. Is there a father in here under 20 years old? Is there a father 20 years old? 21? Start too low? 22? 23? 24? 25? I like doing it this way. It makes you wait longer. 26, 27, 28, 29, 31. I mean 30. 31. Come on. Can't really tell what that is. This one I don't really understand, but it says most experienced oldest father. So I hope you got a lot of experience too then. Start at, uh, where do I start at, George? 85. 84. I know we got any older than 85, do we? <laughs> I better ask that anyway. 83. 82. Uh, come on up here, boy. <laughs> Let everybody see you. This is Boyd Holloway, in case y'all didn't know. Can you turn around so Brandy can take your picture, Boyd? Can, can you help Brandy to take your picture? And Seth Crump, will you come down here? We come over here, bring your gift certificate. Put them in the corner. In the corner. <laughs> Congratulations, boys. We're going to ask all the fathers to line up behind Boyd. Boyd's going to be first. Come on up here, Boyd. Come on up here. If all the fathers will make a line behind Boyd, these children got a prize for you, okay? So we're going to start a little marching train, and I'm going to walk with you, Boyd, because Brandy's going to take her picture at the very end, okay? Okay. We're going to make a little marching train. Maybe some marching music would be good. Okay. Thank you, fathers. <laughs> Make 
Thank you, daddies. you all. all right. uh, Miss Regina Mitchell, play us a song. kids we get y'all carry them for nine months but we pay for them for the rest of their lives <laughs> pastor david crump i 
run from your face and bring back the gold to your hand. If God would but grant me the power just to turn back the pages of time, I'd give all I own if I could but atone to that silver haired daddy of mine. sorrows and care Oh dear mother is waiting in heaven just to comfort and soul us to them If I could recall all the heartache Dear old daddy I've called you to bear If I could erase those lines from your face and bring back the gold Just to turn back the pages of time I'd give all I own if I could put a tone To that silver-haired daddy of mine to do that, wouldn't we? Turn back the pages of time. All right, I want to read one verse from uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 7, and uh, speak to us today on what I think is a great father, and that be the man named Noah. And so that's what we want to try to speak about this morning on this Father's Day. Hebrews chapter 11. In verse number 7, it says, By faith Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world, and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. May we pray. Father, thank you for your word uh, today, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for these that have gathered here uh, in the house of the Lord. And we pray your blessing be upon the furthest this serves. We pray for all of these fathers. Uh, that are gathered here this morning. We pray the blessings of God uh, would certainly be upon them, Lord, that you'll use each of us, Lord, to raise our children as you would have us to and uh, to direct them in the ways of the Lord. And we pray for your uh, blessings upon everyone else, Lord, that's in this service this morning. We pray that you'll open our hearts, open our minds to the word of God today, Lord, help us to see uh, this story uh, this morning, maybe in a new way, a new light, uh, maybe than we've ever seen it before. For. Pray, Lord, that you'll just touch hearts today, Lord. Help us to be drawn uh, close to you. And we'll be careful to praise you and to thank you and to love you uh, for that you do for us. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Look at this story in the book of Genesis, chapter 6, 7, and 8. Actually, it gives us the whole uh, account uh, of, of Noah, the, his life, and uh, what was happening uh, during uh, this event uh, and see uh, in, in particularly in chapter 6 things just stand out uh, to us in verses uh, 5 and 6 and, and 12 and uh, 14 especially and those words are God saw verse number 5 he saw the wickedness he saw the evil that was in, in the land in verse 7 it says the Lord said he said what he would do, and he would destroy a man whom he had created uh, from the face of the earth. And then we see where he said in verse 12 that God looked 
upon the earth. And he began to consider and to see uh, that it was uh, corrupt. And, uh, and then verse 13 says, And God said again, and then verse uh, 14, he says to Noah, uh, to make thee an ark of gopher wood and rooms that he was to put uh, within uh, that ark. Well, this begins out in verse in chapter number six that man began uh, to multiply upon uh, the face of the earth. And when they did, then there were daughters that were born uh, uh, unto these men. And the sons of God, which is believed to be the sons of Seth, uh, uh, began to take these uh, daughters that were born uh, to, their, uh, to their wives. And God said uh, after this that, he, that my spirit uh, shall not always strive uh, with man. And so God saw the wickedness. He saw the corruption. He saw the, uh, that men's hearts were evil continually. And God said, I will destroy a uh, man whom I have created. But Noah, what a blessing that is, found grace uh, in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace. He found favor uh, with God. And God uh, used Noah to prepare this ark, uh, Hebrews says there, to the saving uh, of his house. And that was the only converts that he had. Those were the only ones that uh, made it into uh, the ark. Now Noah stepped out <clears throat> on faith. Uh, on the revelation that God gave to him and he stepped out on faith to prepare this ark uh, uh, to the saving of his house. I mean, everyone could have, uh, could have come into the ark. They could have all been saved, uh, but they refused uh, uh, the call of preacher Noah. Noah was a preacher of righteousness according to uh, Peter uh, in his epistles. Uh, and so Noah was a preacher of righteousness he preached that uh, which was right. He preached about that which would uh, cause, uh, enable them to be saved. And he began to move with fear, the Bible said, and prepared uh, this ark then to the saving of his house. And he condemned the world around him with the testimony of faith uh, uh, that he had. Uh, because Noah walked with God and the world around him didn't. Uh, Noah uh, uh, believed uh, in God. He trusted in God and others did not. And so they were condemned because they wouldn't believe. Jesus, when he came, he said he came not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved uh, because the world was already condemned uh, because they believed not on the name of the Son of the living God. They did not believe on the Lord. They did not believe. And these people did not believe uh, uh, the preaching of Noah and so they were condemned within themselves uh, it wasn't the, that Noah uh, condemned them and, and began to throw stones at them but they were condemned because they saw before them a man that was walking with God a man that the Bible said was perfect uh, in all of his generations uh, and that he walked with the Lord uh, and when they looked upon uh, Noah this man of righteousness this preacher of righteousness uh, then they were condemned in themselves. They knew they were going the wrong way, but they wouldn't turn. Uh, they knew that the, uh, that the flood was coming, the rain that had never rained before, uh, but Noah was telling them uh, that it's going to rain. Uh, but they would not believe uh, Noah. And many today will not believe the, uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many today will not believe uh, uh, the, uh, the preachers of the word of God. Uh, that are pro uh, proclaiming uh, the word uh, of the Lord. But I want to see how, how Noah was great here. The one thing that stands out to us uh, that makes Noah a great father was that he won his family, that his family followed him. Uh, his family followed him uh, to the house of God. And every father uh, that's a godly father uh, should encourage their family uh, to be in the house of God. Amen. You may get tired of hearing that, uh, but I'm going to keep sounding it off, uh, amen, as long as I live because it's important uh, for us to 
to be together uh, as the family of God. And all of our families here this morning make up the family of God. It makes up the children of God. It makes up uh, the house of the Lord. And, and one family couldn't do it. It takes every one of us uh, uh, to show how important uh, that the house of the Lord is and how important it is uh, for us to serve God. And so he was a great, uh, he was a great father uh, because uh, he uh, won his family to God. And they followed him uh, and, and God told him to build this ark uh, uh, to the saving of his house. Uh, and his family was involved in this. I believe that he would tell uh, 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 Ham or, or, or uh, uh, Japheth or whatever their names were uh, to go get a, a board for him. Go get it some wood. Uh, to go get that gopher wood or go for it boy. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> go for that wood and let's build this ark. Uh, and they build it together. And we build families together. We build the church together. Jesus said upon this rock I will build my church uh, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. But he's depending on us uh, uh, to carry on the work. We had it in uh, Sunday school I think uh, this morning there where God had chosen disciples uh, uh, to carry on uh, uh, the work that he had begun. What Jesus began, uh, he, he turned it over uh, to his disciples. Uh, Jesus was the light of the world and then he turns to his disciples and said, ye are the light of the world. You're a city that's set on a hill that can't be hid. Uh, you're the salt of the earth. Uh, and so we're to become uh, that, uh, that light and that salt uh, uh, and, uh, and that city that's on a hill that people can see that somebody is still serving God. Uh, a lot of people uh, try to encourage me uh, to close down Wednesday night and close down Sunday night and rest. Uh, there is no rest uh, uh, for us. Uh, we're on the battlefield uh, for the Lord and we can't close down just because others don't show up. I've got to show up. My daddy walks through snow knee, uh, waist deep nearly uh, to get here by himself just to pray. Amen. Now, somebody's got to make a sacrifice if the church is going to stand, uh, if the people of our God is going to stand and be a witness in this world, uh, then somebody has to be faithful. Somebody has to bear the load. Somebody has to take up the cross uh, and follow Jesus. Uh, and we're going to stand before God one day and we're going to give an account uh, uh, for that which we've done for him. Uh, have we served him? Uh, can we uh, uh, say that we are a great uh, father this morning because we're leading our family uh, in the right direction. I mean, we can lead them uh, to all of the entertainment places of this world, but guess what? We've got six days uh, uh, that we can do that. On the Lord's day, we ought to be in the house of God, and we ought to be uh, counted with the children of God saying, I belong to Jesus, uh, and I'm going to find myself uh, uh, in his house because I believe this is the best place you'll ever find uh, to find God. Uh, if you go anywhere to the house of God, that's the best place you'll ever find uh, uh, that you'll be able to find God. Amen. I know we think, well, he's everywhere and he is, uh, but he had a specific place uh, for those people in the Old Testament uh, to come together that they would not get out here among uh, the groves and begin to worship idols and to go after uh, false gods. Uh, he had them to be there where they could hear uh, the teaching of, of the word of God, the teaching of the law. And we need to be together uh, to show that we're strong uh, as one unit uh, that separated. We're not that strong, but when we come together, we're strong. We are strong. And Noah was great uh, in that his family was following him. And we're only going to be great if we're able uh, to win our families and allow them and enable them to follow us uh, uh, in the things of God, in the ways of the Lord sing the song uh, sometime will the circle uh, be unbroken? Uh, will it be unbroken? I don't want the family circle uh, to be unbroken. Uh, I want my family to be in heaven. Uh, amen. Uh, I want them to follow me to church uh, but I want them to follow me to heaven. Uh, when the rapture takes place uh, uh, catch hold of my feet. Uh, praise God or my coattail. Whatever you can grab hold of. Then <laughs> Grab hold and let's go. all go to heaven together. We want to be there together. Know the song I want us to be together in heaven. Amen. I don't want to be there by myself. 
and I won't be. <laughs> I know the church looks small uh, in these days, but guess what? In the end, it's going to be a great number. Johnson played it a while ago when the saints go marching in. There's going to be a number, the Bible said, that no man can number. Amen. Jesus spoke about it in the book of Revelation and said there was going to be 10,000 times 10,000 of saints, and that's 100 million within itself. And he didn't stop there. Then he said there'll be thousands of thousands. And so there's going to be a great multitude in heaven in spite of what the devil is trying to do uh, to destroy Christianity and to destroy the church and, and bring corruption and wickedness and evil on this earth. God's going to have a family and he's going to have a big family. Amen. He said to go out into the highways and the hedges that compel them to come in that my house may be full. He wants a house uh, that is full of people and that's full of the glory of God where we're rejoicing rejoicing in the Lord and praising him. Say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. I said say amen. amen. Talk back to me. Praise God. Praise God. Lord help us today. And so Noah would be great in that uh, he would have his family with him. That family was not broken. They were all together uh, in the ark uh, of safety. And another thing that we can see that uh, caused Noah to deserve this title of a great father uh, would be uh, that he raised his family uh, in a time of such evil in the time of such wickedness, in the time of such corruption and violence. I mean, it was all uh, there in that time that he was living. And he raised his family in the midst of all of that. And you and I can do the same thing. If you have uh, young children, uh, you may look out and see, well, what's tomorrow going to be? Amen. We can't get our eyes on what tomorrow is going to be. We have to keep serving God and keep teaching our children uh, and keep Keep them in the house of God and keep them in prayer and keep them in the word of God and every one of us ought to read this Bible every day. We ought to uh, have a time that we're going to read the word of God. We ought to have a time that we're going to slip off somewhere and talk to Jesus, that we're going to pray, that we're going to seek the face of God and ask God to bless every family. Look out in the, in the spirit of your mind over that congregation uh, and pray for every individual that they'll be be blessed, uh, that they'll have good health, uh, that they'll have the blessing of God, uh, and that they'll keep on keeping on uh, uh, for the glory of God, and the Spirit of God will just hover over them, uh, amen, and envelop them in the presence of God. Amen. amen. And Noah, I believe, did uh, all of these things, that he kept his family uh, close uh, to him, and so he raised them in the midst of all of this corruption and everything. And so I think that's why it says here in, in verse 8 of chapter 6 that Noah found grace when he saw all of this corruption, all of this evil, all of the wickedness that was going on. He found favor with God. He had to find it in, in prayer. He had to find it. He had to have an altar somewhere that he went before God in the midst of all this wickedness and evil. Amen. I want God to do something. I want the Lord to do something uh, uh, to, uh, to bring preservation uh, and, and Noah went before God and he uh, found grace uh, in the eyes of the Lord. Uh, he, got, he had favor uh, with God. Uh, and so I tell you, it takes the Lord uh, uh, to enable you and I uh, to find that grace and that favor with him. That will cause us to come uh, to salvation uh, and want our family and our neighbors and our friends to be saved. Uh, so notice he said, verse 3, my spirit shall not always strive with man. And so we may uh, reject the gospel. We may reject uh, the preacher, but we might do that one time uh, too many. So in the midst of all of this, Noah sought God and he, he had God's favor uh, in the way uh, of salvation and that is uh, the ark of God. And so Noah, like all of us, uh, had to be saved by faith. When God spoke to him that it was going to rain, there's going to come a flood upon the earth and everything's going to be destroyed. Uh, in other words, God said, I'm going to start all over. I'm going to start all over. Amen. 
And so everything uh, that lived and moved upon the earth was going uh, to be uh, destroyed. And so Noah went to work for God. He began uh, to preach uh, about uh, the, the flood that was going to come. Remember uh, how that uh, the Bible talked about Enoch when uh, Methuselah was born and said when Methuselah dies the flood will come. And so he knew that the flood uh, was going to come and everything uh, would be taken away. And so he he sees the world around him as so corrupt uh, and evil and violent and, and his life here, uh, his faith that he had was a witness uh, uh, to those around him because he had a relationship uh, with God. That is, he lived out uh, his, uh, his life for Jesus every day uh, and Peter uh, stated then that, uh, that Noah was this preacher of righteousness. He preached about uh, what, uh, uh, what God uh, was going to do about how the flood was going to come and the only way of salvation uh, and preservation would be for them to get uh, into the ark uh, and so we know that only only Noah then got his family uh, to come in uh, to the ark uh, and so they were prepared they were ready and so today I see how uh, discouraging that could have been for Noah when he preaches uh, uh, for a hundred years or more uh, he said uh, his spirit would not all, always strive with man but his years would be 120 years so uh, perhaps he preached 120 years uh, uh, of his life and uh, preparing this uh, ark building out their own dry land never rained a drop but the floods did come and began to raise that ark up and it began uh, to float out there and it rained 40 days uh, and, and 40 nights uh, uh, but Noah had the instructions of God as to what to do uh, and so there's none that got into this ark but Noah and his wife and his sons and his daughter and his daughter-in-laws uh, and they were here uh, uh, following the same path uh, that Noah followed and they got on board uh, and so God says uh, they're in the ark for them to come uh, uh, into the ark uh, and we know the story of how that God said to Noah uh, to, uh, to bring a uh, 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 those clean animals uh, uh, into the ark by sevens. Uh, everyone that was clean. Uh, want you to watch these words uh, that he said, male and female. And of the unclean, of the unclean, he said to bring them in by twos. Watch these words, male and female. And so he didn't have any transgenders. They were male and they were female. They knew exactly what they were. Amen. And God made them male and female when God created man. He created them male and female. Somebody said he called them Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. And so we know uh, that God, even in the animal kingdom, uh, created male and female. Amen. Now I'm not trying to attack anybody at all. I'm just telling you what the Bible said. And I stand on the Bible. I stand for God's word. Uh, uh, regardless of what comes or goes, let the chips fall where they will. Amen. I know exactly how it's supposed to be and I've got to tell it exactly how it's supposed to be. Amen. And I think that's the best way. I'll tell you, if there wasn't a, a heaven to gain, I'd still want to live the God kind of way. I love God's way of living. And that's the way I want to live my life. I want to live separate from this world, separate from sin. I don't need anything of this world. I changed some words of the song the other night. I'm proud to be a Christian. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. I said I don't get my kicks uh, on worldly things uh, and I don't. Uh, I get my thrill from Jesus. Uh, songwriter said I get so thrilled with Jesus every moment, uh, every hour of every day. I get thrilled with him. Amen. And so we know uh, the story of the flood and how that God caused the rains to begin to fall for 40 days and 40 nights, lifted that ark up. And this is a good story because it's a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and redemption. He is the ark of safety. The ark itself speaks of the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. 
Amen. God was the uh, originator of it. Amen. That's the first story. The second story represents the Son of God because that's where the door is, and He is the door. Amen. And the third story represents the Holy Spirit because there's where the window was that the dove would go out of and come back. Amen. We know how it was. Amen. And God sent the raven finally there, and it went to and fro. And then he sent the dove out and it returned because it couldn't find a place for its uh, sole of its foot and uh, kept him seven days, sent him out again, came back with an olive leaf in his, in his mouth. And so he knew that the waters had been abated from the earth. And so he sent the dove out again. It never returned again. Never see it again until it lights on Jesus over there when he's baptized by John in the river of Jordan and the spirit of God came upon Jesus. Amen. In the form, in the bodily shape uh, of a dove. Amen. And so that's our story uh, of Noah and his ark, but it speaks of Jesus. It speaks of our redemption, how God redeemed and sealed, uh, amen, a people and preserved a people inside that ark. And why do we specify male and female? Because there was have to be a, a, a multiplication. Uh, they would have to multiply after this because every all other beast, uh, every living thing was destroyed. Destroyed. It was killed. It was no more. Amen. And, and, and male and male can't produce. And female and female can't produce. It takes male and female. Amen. And God sealed that, that inside that ark. Amen. That, that there would be a multiplication. There would be a new beginning. Amen. And he, he pitched this ark within and without. He put this pitch, this sealant, sealing inside that ark he sealed it he sealed it on the outside uh, amen and we're sealed uh, until the day of redemption uh, and Jesus is, is, uh, has sealed us uh, until that day aren't you glad you're sealed uh, songwriter said I know I've been sealed uh, until the day of redemption uh, and so Noah was a great father in that he led his his family he served God himself uh, he was a uh, he was a, a, a child of God that walk with God that set forth the example for others to walk as he walked with God his family walked with them we used to walk to church some ourselves when I was a little boy guess what I was walking along with my mom and daddy amen me and my brother Max and Tony uh, in particular that's the only ones I remember the rest of them had grown and gone by then but guess what they walked uh, from, from here down to the, uh, the old union hall building where they had church at we walked down here the Ms. Martin's basement to start with. Mom would hold my hand all the way down that dirt road like I was going to run off or something. Amen. But my parents walked to church and I walked along with them. Noah walked to church, if you will, and his family walked along with him. And so he walked with God and he worked for God. He witnessed uh, uh, for God. Uh, he, he wanted uh, his family uh, to be saved. He didn't want them uh, to, uh, to be lost out there somewhere. And so we're looking to God this morning uh, in hope and great expectation uh, uh, that I our family and that our neighbors, our friends will all uh, be saved uh, and we're to live by faith. Uh, and so we need, uh, we need uh, every person that we possibly can uh, to be in the family of God and to live by faith and uh, to have uh, uh, every, uh, every need that we have in our lives, that it will be embedded in that foundation of faith. Uh, amen. We contend for the faith uh, that was once delivered unto the saints uh, and so we know that God will supply all of our need according to his riches in glory uh, that he's able to save he's able to keep you saved he has preserved you in Christ Jesus the Lord uh, if you read the uh, the book of Jude uh, you find that out that uh, that we are preserved uh, in Christ Jesus uh, amen and what's inside can't get out and what's on the outside can't get in uh, God does it right. Uh, you, may, uh, you may can some stuff and you may have something to, uh, uh, to break the seal once in a while, but God's seal won't be broken. Uh, I said God's seal won't be broken. I ain't never had too many to be broken. 
I've been canning over 40 years. Amen. One time I think I forgot to put five of them in the, in the canner. I had them sitting there on the table getting ahead of myself. And I forgot to put them in the canner so they didn't seal. They didn't seal. But I guarantee you if, you, if it's put up right, you can go back 15 years later and it'll still be sealed. Won't it, Lucille? She's a canner. She knows. Amen. But when God seals something, it's sealed for time and eternity. It's not going to spoil. It's not going to go bad. Amen. God has done a work uh, in you and I that is, that is just exactly right. And so I want to be that great father this morning. I've tried to be. Uh, as Jonathan said, I'm not perfect. He didn't say I wasn't. He said he wasn't. But I'll tell you, I'm not. Amen. But uh, I've tried to be perfect in that respect in raising my family and taking them to the house of God. Amen. Right. Tell them the, uh, the right way to go, right and wrong and, and everything, and let them know when they've done wrong, there's going to be discipline, not only by God, but by me. <laughs> Amen. And so you, you want to be that great father. You want to teach your children the way of God the way of righteousness and holiness because without holiness no man shall see the Lord. Right? Without holiness no man, don't care what denomination you are, amen, I'm holiness myself. Don't mind to tell you. Amen, I don't smoke, dip or chew or anything like that. I have before but I don't over 50 years now probably, amen. Thank God. Don't do any of those things. And there might be a lot of things that's worse than that. Don't do them either. I try to live as close to the Lord as I possibly can. That means I want to walk as close to him as I can. Amen. We're not, we're not perfect as we said, but we're striving for it. We're striving for perfection. Paul said for us to go on to perfection. These washings, these baptisms that he was talking about, we will do those things, but we want to go on to that which is perfect, uh, and Jesus is that which is perfect. We don't want to measure ourselves by one another, but measure ourselves by the Lord Jesus Christ, and there will always be room for us to move up a little bit. Amen. There will always be some things in our lives that we have to die to, that we have to put under our feet, uh, that we want to be more more like Jesus. We want to be a change into his likeness more and more every day of our lives because the word said the outward man perisheth, but the inward man is renewed day by day and more and more every day we're being changed into the likeness of Jesus Christ. One day the death angel is going to come and he's going to snatch that grain and that seed of God out of your being and take it and gather it to himself in heaven because the spirit's going back to God and all of this shucks that you see around us is going to be cast off and left behind and go back to the dust of the earth but on that resurrection morning I'll have a new body and I'll have a new life and we'll be shouting on the hills of glory can you say praise the Lord somebody I mean God's got it all arranged he's got it all fixed up amen Praise the Lord. Used to hear a lady up the mill telling that the Lord's going to prepare a place for people, and when he gets it prepared, he'll come get you. I kind of I kind of think she's pretty well on the right track. When he gets my place ready, he'll come get me. Amen. The Hebrew people used to talk about uh, uh, you know, the, their son getting married, and when they'd get married, he'd build on, uh, build that uh, another room on the house, make room for the uh, for the bride, and uh, build that other room on the house, and he'd go get his bride after that room was finished. Amen. When our rooms get finished, I believe the Lord's going to come for us. Amen. And my room might be better, uh, be finished for yours. Amen. But we believe it's uh, not rooms, it's mansions. Amen. When my mansion gets completed, amen, I'll move into it. I've never had one here. I had a tin can to start with, and that's what I still got. I just got it covered up. Amen. I've remodeled that place three times. I could have bought a fine house for what I've got in that trailer. Amen. 
But anyway, I'm happy. Praise God, going to heaven happy, living in this world happy. Praise God, and I'm just thankful for what the Lord has done for me. I'm glad for his, for his salvation in my own soul. I'm glad for, that he called me one day, touched my heart. Praise God, when I was just a, a little old boy, amen, not hardly six years old, but Jesus came into my heart, uh, amen. And about 20 years later, he filled me with something I didn't know what it was about, but I've never been the same since. Uh, now, I know that there's a, uh, there's a difference. Uh, uh, in the lives of people that have been filled with the Spirit of God. Amen. It's not just some uh, dry, dead, orthodox religion, uh, but it's a living reality that you know that Jesus is alive and well, that he's dwelling within you. Amen. And one day we're going to dwell with him forever and forever. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How many of you fathers want to be a great father this morning with me? Amen. I want to be that great father. Praise God. And continue to be that great father. I'm still uh, uh, Jonathan's father and Jeff's father and Angela's father. Amen. I'm still their father. I'll, be their, I'll always be their father. And your father, God, will always be your father. Amen. And he wants us to be obedient, submissive to him, and to do his will. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, God bless you. Let's pray. Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for this privilege you've granted us, Lord, to be in the house of the Lord today. I pray your blessing be upon everyone. Lord, use us fathers here this morning to, uh, to do that that you would have us to do, to be what we need to be for your glory and for your honor. And we'll praise you and thank you and love you for that you do for us. In Jesus' name. I want to sing a song here in a moment, but I... I meant to read this at the beginning, I forgot. It, the title of this, is, Teddy Mitchell had it, and it, the title of it is, uh, Would You Like to Buy a Nice Necktie? Well, I don't have to buy one. Somebody brought me one. Amen. But I want to read this uh, to you because of Father's Day, because this is what you normally get on Father's Day is a tie, right? So I, wanna, I wanted to read this. And it says, a man on a camel riding through the desert looking for any signs of life. His supplies were running low his, and his camel died. Now on foot, he desperately sought refuge from the heat and most importantly, a source for water. And suddenly he came across a vendor in the middle of the desert. He said, thank God I found you. The man cried, please help me. I'm in dire need of some water. Well, said the vendor, I don't have any water, but would you like to buy one of these ties? What am I going to do with a tie in the middle of the desert? That's all I'm selling, sir, and if you don't like it, then I can't help you. The man left the vendor and walked for miles, praying each minute that he would find refuge from the sun and some water to drink. And his eyes squinched a few times when he came across this restaurant in the distance. Unable to comprehend a restaurant located in the middle of the desert, he thought maybe it was a mirage, but decided to check it out anyway. As he approached the door, his mouth opened in amazement, seeing that the place actually existed. The doorman stopped him before he entered. Excuse me, sir, the doorman said, but you can't come in here without a tie. <laughs> so he needed to buy that tie out there in the desert, didn't he? He still didn't get any water or any food 